So I, I call it a you know, finite neural method. It's an application of a neural network for solving partial differential equations. Uh, again, uh, uh, in the last uh, three lectures, I've been talking about uh, the uh, definition of neural network functions and the approximation properties and uh, its relationship with uh, finite element method. And uh, right now I'm trying to apply this uh, neural network function to the numeric solution of a partial differential equation. Uh, okay, I'm going to talk about a simple model problem, uh, namely elliptic boundary value problem. And, uh, but I'm going to talk about uh, high order problems. I have, I have been obsessed with high order problems for some, uh, at some period of time. <laughs> because uh, when you do find the element method, uh, it's uh, difficult to construct uh, Finite elements for high order PDEs, especially conforming elements. And uh, but anyway, it doesn't really for for when you do the neural network, it doesn't really make any difference. Of course, uh, one of the big uh, set of uh, using deep learning for solving partial differential equations is a high dimensional problem. Again, uh, I can do any dimension here in theory. And uh, a special case is that uh, uh, a special case is a uh, uh, Poisson equation and uh, biharmonic equations. And uh, then you have uh, boundary value problems. You, you look at the, the boundary value. And uh, so dedicated boundary condition uh, is just the the traces of this uh, dedicated, uh, the, the, this is a dedicated boundary condition. And uh, uh, you can talk about different boundary conditions. You can, for example, this is a dedicated boundary condition. And uh, uh, you get all the normal derivative out to so m minus 1. But uh, there's some internet connection problems. Okay, now it's okay. No, you should be okay, except you, you, you need to share. No, let me share, yeah. yeah. So, so for some reason, the internet, uh, what are internet I'm on, on right now? I'm using uh, EDU, you wrong? Uh, which internet I'm using? Oh, I'm using the sun. Okay, I, I share the screen. Uh, it's okay now? Yeah. So there's uh, something, this is a decay boundary problem, and the, the Neumann boundary problem for high order PDE is actually not so obvious. And uh, uh, I have to click on this not to be able. Uh, so for dedicated, uh, how can I spend? For dedicated, uh, a Neumann problem, if you do the integral by part, okay, if you take the, the high order PDEs like that, you, you do a test function. When you do an integral by part, you have this bilinear form. Right? Then you have some, uh, you collect some of uh, the boundary terms. So it turns out uh, uh, one of these things, like a U is all this, uh, the, or maybe this V is a dedicated one. The, the one is the dual to that one. It's a Neumann data. Anyway, you can, uh, it's a simple, I didn't, you can actually prove these things. Uh, this boundary has all the trace theorem and all that stuff. And uh, again, I, I just want to try to be rigorous in doing, do the best I can. 
I, but it's difficult to be rigorous these days when you want to talk about it. <laughs> but, and uh, so you, this is Neumann boundary condition, you have some formula. And uh, so for, for uh, uh, the solution of, of course, uh, when you do the Neumann boundary value problem, you don't have any boundary condition to be imposed. Okay. And uh, to the delicate problem, you have the edge of zero m. And that will be the loss function, okay, what do you call minimization or risk function, whatever. Uh, we're going to minimize that guy. Uh, so, uh, anyway, the, in the finite element uh, community, for example, uh, construct a high order element is not so obvious. If you do uh, m equal to, it has to be piecewise, is globally say m minus 1 if you do conforming elements. But there's some work, and uh, uh, recently there's some work. You need a degree of polynomial 2 to the dr plus 1. Uh, if you take r equal to 2, d equal to r equal to 1. Wait a minute, r equal to 1, that's like a, in 3D, that's uh, 8 plus 1. You, just, you need a minus all the polynomial in 3D to have H2 elements. Uh, it's a high order polynomial. I have a nice order in 3D. I think you need uh, how many coefficients? 220 or something? <laughs> in one, uh, anyway, it's, it's a tough business. But if you do machine learning, actually neural network is kind of makes this very simple because uh, again you do the neural network which I, I said before, and uh, okay I, I one of the things if you do polynomial of degree, if you if you do polynomial of degree m or, or, or you yeah, relate to the k, you do the sober normal. You can also prove that uh, there's always a negative half there. Or you have this something extra term. And uh, again, this is optimal error estimate which I have proved. And uh, so, so the, the, the important thing is that if k is greater or equal to m, this is automatically in the HM. So the conforming is totally trivial in your network. Construct a piecewise polynomial in 3D or in 4D. In H2, it's a nightmare. It's, it's, it's totally very difficult. But uh, anyway, I actually wrote a few papers on this. <laughs> but I did a long conforming. Talking about citing reference, I didn't cite my own reference here. <laughs> but uh, but uh, uh, did I? Uh, maybe not. Oh, there's no reference of mine, my own. <laughs> so they are. Uh, so conforming element is trivial. I just raised the power. So if you want to do H2, global H2, you only need a piecewise quadratic element. Try to construct a piecewise quadratic element for in 3D. In any dimension, H2 is quadratic is sufficient. That surprises me. But the question, do you have any approximation problem? Uh, so, all right, so we, asked, we had a question in the morning, that, okay, how do you, <laughs> we don't do Galoogian, okay, you want to minimize this guy, okay, it's more like the loss function, risk. But if you, you don't have to do this, you can do pin, for example, you do got the residual or something. And uh, this is associated with energy. In physics, uh, some of these uh, partial differential equations mostly are coming from energization of the min minimizing energy. And the partial differential equation is the, the Euler-Lagrange equation. It's actually not original physics. The PDE is, a, is the gradient equal to zero if you took a global minimizer. So the, uh, the, 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 the original, this Galoogian method variational principle, it means the, the gradient equal to zero in the weak sense. So this is more physical in some sense. Uh, uh, 
So you, you, you solve the PDE uh, by doing this energy minimization. Okay. Uh, if you can solve this minimization problem, that's a big if, of course. I was, when I first should do the analysis, I, I thought it would be a nightmare. How do you analyze this? It turns out, even though this GFV is highly long convex with respect to those parameters, but it's still convex for the V. Because of that, you still have this best approximation problem. This is like the energy norm. That surprised me, but I actually was, I, I, don't know, I was a little bit, I, I didn't, I, I, I put three days aside to try to prove, it turns out three minutes I was able to prove it, <laughs> but anyway. But, but uh, anyway, that's uh, no big deal, but uh, it's the best approximation. So then you have all the error estimated, if you wish. You can do all the error estimate, right? And uh, for Neumann boundary value problem, you can take some alpha, depending on what kind of alpha could be zero, but alpha, yeah, and you can take any activation function, okay? If you have whatever error estimate you have, whatever error, error estimate you have for the, for the activation function, you have the, if you can solve the optimization problem, you can find the global minimizer. But for dedicated problem, uh, uh, in this uh, pins model, for example, you can also penalize uh, the Neumann data. For the, in this case, uh, because I use the energy, you don't need the Neumann data, you don't have to penalize it. But you, if you do dedicated problem, you have to penalize the dedicated data. You put some uh, penalization, penalization method. But that one, you would lose some accuracy. But uh, I, I will not talk about the dedicated data. But it's the same, but the, you don't have the shop. But you, you, can, you, you can also argue, okay, let's just construct a neural network that actually satisfies my dedicated boundary condition. I, I believe, I'm sure there's all people working on that sort of things. It's probably not very difficult because you have so many options for using, choosing this these actuation functions. So we got the error estimate down. It's just so too easy, huh? So uh, am I down? <laughs> but uh, we, have a, we have a big uh, if. If you solve the optimization problem, that's a big if. And, uh, and before I deal with that issue, you need to do the numerical quadrature. In the final element, uh, you do piecewise polynomial, you, you integrate this things on each triangle, you have a smooth function in there. But, uh, but for this one, you have an integration, you don't have elements, so you want to integral this. One. That's the first issue. The second issue that, uh, well, I mean, it's the issue, but you still have the numerical quadrature, how you're going to analyze the convergence. Uh, that's actually, if you, if you go check the paper, there are many papers written on this. You just, uh, well, I'm sure this is out of date. <laughs> Every, usually, uh, I remember last time I went to a conference, uh, the guy is confused. Oh, I apologize. My paper was written last month. That's too old. <laughs> so it's out of date. <laughs> but this is already two years ago. Sorry. I certainly have to apologize. I, there's a lot of papers. But the thing, when I go read this uh, paper, when you go read this paper, then you'll find there's always some assumptions hidden there. I'm trying to give a rigorous uh, analysis. And uh, again, uh, it's difficult to make it a rigorous analysis. Uh, uh, numerical quality, first of all, you talk about numerical quality. Yeah, if you, uh, when you, uh, one of the interesting things is that uh, in uh, uh, machine learning, when you do the loss function, there's something called expected loss. 
So the uh, statistician, machine learning people, the God given this distribution sitting there. They do the expectation. But nobody knows, only God knows this distribution sitting there. So what are you going to do? So you sample this. So not your number theorem or whatever, you can sample this. Each sampling point in that distribution is a data. For example, an image. OK, this image is a cat. That's the data. So you sample this, you put a label on it. And uh, so in uh, machine learning for expected, you have to sample because you do not know the expectation in general, right? But in PDEs, do you have to sample? Huh? So most uh, paper in the literature, people just sample because um, uh, you can sample, but uh, what do we mean by sample? Sample in this place is a numerical quadrature point, okay? You can, I, I say, why do you, yeah. Monte Carlo method in 1D, 2D, I don't know how efficient that one should be, but you could, uh, Monte Carlo is supposed to be very good for high dimensional problem. Monte Carlo method is one of those algorithms really has uh, no curse of dimensionality. Because the Monte Carlo only asks for one number. You take a high dimensional integral, you ask for the integral. Uh, now if you do solving PD, you have to solve the whole solution. Seems there are lots of things to ask, but, but Monte Carlo, but if a low dimensional problem, uh, do you have to sample, I would maybe use a, uh, some numerical quadrature. You can do Monte Carlo, or you can do Gaussian or Simpson rule or whatever you do. And uh, then you have to minimize the discrete kind of integral in something. Uh, you can put a deterministic numerical quality sampling or by sampling. Okay, you can sample this. Let's just assume that an omega has a unit volume. In that case, it's a, it's a is a probability, you can think about this as a distribution, the integration. You have a uniform distribution. I know the distribution right now, okay? It's a uniform distribution. So uh, you can do numerical determinist, you can also do the sampling. Now the question is I have to er estimate the error. So if you do the error analysis, so you can say this is numerical, suppose the quadrature rule, you can do a, a you, you can do Gaussian or whatever, you do these things, but you need some. Now the question that if you if you uh, look at the final element literature, uh, well if you do the numerical quadrature, how do you do convergence analysis? And uh, then you have to prove, you somehow you have to give it a bound of this high order sobriff norms. And, uh, but the one way to get around is so-called a Bernstein equality. In fact, we call a inverse equality. For, for a high order sobriff norm will be bounded by low order sobriff norm with some, in the final term, it's h to some negative power, we call a inverse equality. The inverse equality is always true in finite element because it's a linear vector space. So for any of us uh, to study any functional analysis uh, in finite dimensional space, every two, all the two norms are equivalent. They're all equivalent. So maybe the constant will be dependent on the dimension, it's no big deal. Though. And uh, so it seems to be natural to expect, to, to make an assumption like this. Except that uh, here we do, we, our neural network function set is not a linear vector space. It's, there has no linear structure. It's, there's no such a thing called a finite dimensional in this case. And uh, so, there are many papers actually made such an assumption. Let's say you cannot prove it, but let's just assume it. <laughs> if you, there are some papers. And uh, 
so now the question, when I look at this thing, I said, okay, we've got to prove it, okay. And uh, do you think uh, this is going to be okay? <laughs> and uh, it turns out that we could not prove it. If we could not prove it, then you have to give a counting example. Huh? Uh, so we found a counting example. It's actually a very simple counting example. Uh, basically, the, 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 uh, the, uh, if you do inverse equality, for those of you who like finer than element analysis, you need to assume it's a quasi-uniform meshes or something. The, uh, if you think about a one-dimensional problem, you can have anything, you know, you can have a function go anything like crazy, <laughs> you know, has an epsilon. So you, you can, the gradient can be as sharp as you can. You know, you can push the two grid points and go close to each other. So uh, you can just do something like this. You, you, you like function of that kind. And uh, so this uh, gradient can be very sharp. If we move this uh, close to each other, so you get a very large gradient. Oh, thank you. And uh, uh, so you can prove the, that uh, you know the ratio of these things is epsilon neg one over negative. So this for any epsilon. So there's no way you can have the Bernstein inequality. So Bernstein inequality cannot hold for neural network functions. Uh, but uh, again, this is a hard business, but you have to do something. <laughs> so we have this stable neural network function. I have introduced this thing, sigma n m. So it turns out that I, we can use that one. Again, uh, the stable neural network sigma a i is bounded by that. If you do the relu or something, I can put this in some kind of uh, bounded set, OK? And uh, uh, a compact set, then you, you, you do these things here. This is the stable neural network. I made the point of the stable neural network, the coefficients is, has to be under control. Uh, first of all, we have some beautiful mathematical theory. Hopefully, by using the metric entropy, I also somehow convince you you have to put some bound on the sides of the coefficients. Otherwise, this rate of convergence uh, doesn't really make much sense. Or maybe it's not codable, it's not doable. And uh, here, I'll put this bound like that. This M is going to be related to your regularity of the solution using the variation space or variance space. So this is the theorem I, I showed you before that uh, uh, that uh, you have the convergence. Uh, if we relu to the case power, you can get this rate of convergence. I, in this case, I do the H of M space. You have the loss the, the convergence a little bit, but the negative half is already there, always there. <laughs> so it is nice. If you do this one here, then you can do the analysis. So the, the thing is that uh, if you use, uh, if you have, okay, if you use uh, lots of quadrature points, if A is a sufficient large, then you, you can do some triangle equality. So you can get some best approximation, okay? And uh, uh, so that's the theory. So again, I, th this theorem is, uh, can only be proved under the assumption the global minimizer can be found. OK. I, I, I'm making progress, OK, one, one thing at a time. <laughs> but, uh, and uh, OK, then I, I still don't get this. Well, even though the proof is pretty simple, they, they, one of the things here is that my neural network function is quite uh, smooth. You know, I, this of course you can criticize me, this is too much to assume. Your solution is too smooth. I'm sorry, I don't know, to, I don't know how to do other cases. I'm going to assume my solution is very smooth. My domain is smooth, everything is so smooth. I want to do some analysis. Of course, there's a many, it's a, it's a big and open area. 
So if you make this step, I just happen to have very nice theorem for these things. You have smooth function. I do all these things. You can get this. Uh, of course, this is the, the approximation property. This is the, uh, you know, this is the, for example, you do some Gaussian or something. You get this uh, rate of convergence. You just have triangle inequality, you put them together, you balance these two terms. Okay, then you get it. This is a pretty trivial analysis. Nothing much. But uh, we're lucky we have this uh, stable manu uh, neural network, we always have the theory, everything just work. Now the big question is that uh, how do you do this guy? Okay, uh, no, no, sampling. This is the, <laughs> this is the, uh, uh, but uh, in practice, uh, again, uh, the sampling is easy. Of course, oh, I, I don't know. You need a cube or something you can sample, maybe for arbitrary domain. Uh, I don't know what's the best algorithm to sample arbitrary domain, but uh, of a numerical <laughs> computation for the, on the unit cube. But you, you, I suppose you can sample the things. If you sample the things, how do you uh, analyze the rate of convergence? And uh, it turns out one way to do it is that there's something called a Radman complexity of a function. If you take a function, you you have uh, first of all you do the sampling this x1 to the xn. In this case, uh, I draw from sampling of a uniform distribution. Again, uh, my integral the, is to, can consider to be as a expectation of a uniform distribution. You sample there. But then uh, there's a Radman complexity, uh, and uh, you put some coefficients there between like minus uh, one, plus or minus one, I believe, uh, sign, random signs. Somehow, it, one over n sigma i equal. Uh, this is what it, 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 somehow it measures the oscillation of the function sometimes in the average sense. And uh, there's a beautiful theorem. Uh, with, with that, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is uh, uh, talking about reference. I found it in this book. Uh, there's some. So, how do you estimate? Uh, well, if you take all these uh, function class in the H, in the function class F, you take the expectation, uh, do the sampling, you take the suprema, it's bounded by two times the Radman complexity. And uh, I actually didn't know who did this in first, but uh, uh, so somehow, somehow, uh, my Radman, com yeah, my, yeah, the Radman complexity. Okay, now uh, then, then you have to to uh, uh, to estimate this uh, neural network function Radman complexity. They are very you know special kind of function, and uh, it turns out uh, we can do all these proofs if uh, uh, you have all this this uh, basic properties. <coughs> And uh, so then you go to the, on the functional class, you can actually estimate, uh, you know, uh, this is the paper I written with my tool of my postdoc, former postdoc. And uh, uh, so the Radman complexity of this neural network function class can be estimated. It's not a very difficult analysis. It's not so trivial, but it's not difficult. Uh, uh, but if you actually do the dictionary of the ReLU to the K, if sigma, for example, is a WM plus one, you can actually estimate the Radman complexity for the n to the negative half, n to the, you know, it has some kind of regularity there to get the n to the negative half. But the Monte Carlo method, you do not expect to be better than into the negative half. Okay, and uh, so you, you get that. And uh, so, so, so anyways, I don't know, you have to up to, because later, I already have done a few proof in my talk. 
proper another <laughs> this way. <laughs> but it's a, not, not a difficult analysis, okay? And uh, so now, uh, you do convergence, uh, now, now, now you want to, uh, in this case, uh, I'm going to, again, I make the assumption that uh, I can solve this global minimizer exactly. Then you have some uh, error estimate. So the, 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 the message you are telling you is the rather than complexity of the sample, you get into the negative half. Okay. But in this case, you have to do the error estimate in the expected values. Uh, so the, the message here, you can still do some analysis. You get these things, now you balance this sampling point and the number of neurons to get maybe a, a optimal rate of convergence somehow. It depends on how, how much. So mathematically, I have a, a good rate of convergence, okay? And uh, now the big question is the optimization algorithm. Uh, in the machine learning and deep learning, based on my limited uh, understanding of this business, I, I don't know how much weight I want. Maybe 99% of the weight you should put on the optimization algorithm. And uh, oh, actually, I have to take that one back. Sorry. And they, uh, I once had some, I, you know, I've been, I'm an optimization, well, I'm a iterative guy, right? Then I've been asking everybody I know, why everybody use gradient descent method, other method? Why not other methods? And uh, anybody knows the answer? <laughs> of course, you, 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 if you go to the, <laughs> if you go to the, uh, uh, the YouTube, for example, I remember I, I saw some the professor from Stanford. Uh, it's a gradient descent method, or a stochastic gradient descent for that matter. And, uh, and there's, again, this is still the optimization algorithm. Uh, the gradient descent method, of course, is very simple. And uh, another thing is uh, you can have the unbiased gradient, sample the gradient. But uh, then there was a stochastic gradient. You do the mini batch of all this stuff. And uh, at least according to some of the YouTube of the same batch, in the old days, uh, computer scientists, if you have uh, one million data, one of I equal to one to N, one million data, if you take the gradient, it's just too much to take, <laughs> too much computation. So, okay, <laughs> computer scientists are very courageous. They just do mini batches and do a parallel stuff. But uh, miraculously, I think I have some mathematical understanding of this uh, uh, stochastic gradient descent method has some, I believe, regularization effect. And, um, uh, you know, the, there has been lots of work in mathematical, even computer science community that uh, uh, okay, why don't you use the city method? Why don't we use a second order method? There's a, something called, uh, you know, the, the truth of the matter is that uh, you have this uh, sampling, then you have the, uh, there's something called a generalization accuracy. And uh, you only have that many data there. You don't want to fit the data too well. Huh? Yeah. If you fit it too, it's what something called overfitting. And uh, so you don't want to work too hard. Huh? Uh, anybody knows the, the overfitting business? Suppose uh, this is the decision boundary. Suppose this is a decision boundary, okay? Then you have some data here. This is my data here. And then you have some other data to do some classification problems. You do this one here. What if you have uh, some uh, training data is uh, is an outlier, okay? <laughs> so if you if you want to if you work too hard, you presumably the decision boundary is this one, okay? But if you want to really fit this one well, the decision boundary will be like that. 
Okay, if you really, so this outlier, you are not supposed to fit it so well, okay? So next time, for this one, you'll be in bad luck. Next time, my, my test of data is actually there. It's pretty much the right side. But uh, if you overfit it, you get a wrong label, okay? You don't get the wrong prediction. So you, 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 you do not really want to solve this uh, Optimization best for way. So I, I often always argue you in that regard, the training algorithm itself also give you a model. I don't know if that makes sense to you because uh, you we don't really know what to optimize. You do a sampling, if you really get a global minimizer of this uh, empirical loss function, you surely have overfitting. You don't want to find a global minimizer. So you want to find a compromised minimizer. So, so with some regularization, uh, uh, this is for stochastic gradient descent method really give you a good balance. That's the philosophical or technical. There's some theory behind it. But there's another reason which is very interesting is that since the stochastic gradient descent, uh, there's another thing called Adam, works so successfully. I think this is what I have tremendous respect to computer scientists in that, that uh, they really have a beautiful, very nice written code. Now you have those algorithms sitting there, it's industry standard. For mathematicians like us, if you have an optimization problem, you're looking for the best algorithm that solve that problem. No, not in machine learning. The machine learning, you have SGD Adam method sitting there. You are looking for model so that this training algorithm works the best. That makes sense? You have algorithm first, then you look for model. I believe that's how what's going on here because uh, you know why we also tune in all the hyperparameter. You why well, yeah okay. You have some of the learning rate. I, I actually the, my group uh, we tune a lot of models. <laughs> so, so this learning rate have some funny way of doing the learning rate. You know, do some you uh, halving do a cosine curve. Do all kind of strange stuff. For those of you who tuned it, you probably know what I'm talking about. So, but okay, you just a learning rate, you may want to tune, but the mini batch size you want to tune. But those are the things uh, which, uh, but the algorithm structure itself, you don't tune. So you, don't, you tune the other, other parameter, all the other structure, neuron size, the size of the mini, the, 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 the activation, oh, no, no, the, 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 if you do new CNN, you do a kernel, all the stuff. So the machine learning community being very successful in this practice. Now the question is that for, the, for PDE guys like us, do we really have to use the gradient descent method? <laughs> huh? We have many challenges. We have good news is that uh, we have the loss function. Uh, we know the distribution. We know everything. You, we know a lot of stuff. And uh, to, to get another data, to get a, a data, you know, this is the machine learning. If you go to this data, trying to do the application, data is pretty much uh, really whoever has the what. Well, Basically, you have two things you have to have. You have to have a big computer, a lot of GPUs. Now, these days, you have H100. <laughs> or you have lots of data to, to get ahead. Algorithm is down, it's fixed. <laughs> the, even the open source, everything <laughs> did in there. Now, you tune some, uh, even the, chat, the GPT, the transformer business. I, I, I talk to computer scientists. If you will ask more questions, then what, why this thing should work, they don't really care. GPT is, uh, transform is there, so if you have data, you go fit it. But anyway, but it's been successful. There are so many smart people in the business. But for us, 
Now we have the computer power. Yeah, that's the problem. This is what people have been telling us. Okay, professors, don't work on the data science. There's no way you can compete with a company. You don't have big computers. Okay. But the data for numerical PDE, data turns out to be easy in this particular case. Okay. What is the data here? Huh? Oh, I'm talking about this particular problem here. What will be the data when you sample the data in this particular? Huh? Yeah? Yeah, this is integration points. It's numerical quadrature points. In practice, you get an image, you put a label, you have the pace of people to do it. Here, you can sample as many as you wish, okay? It's totally cheap to get the data. And uh, uh, anyway, we have some difference in this business. And uh, now the question is that you can sample as many as you wish. You can do quadrant, you can do whatever. Now, you, do you want to work with, uh, with uh, gradient descent method? Of course, there's also issue about generalization. Of the, but it turns out that we, I'm actually talking about only solve one function. But tomorrow, we, we have this operator learning business. In that case, you do have data. Uh, in different kind of data, you have to have solution <coughs> data, OK? That one, that one, you have to sample somehow. Uh, uh, so there are different all the features we have. And uh, now, the, what is the optimization? If you do gradient descent method, which I told you, uh, 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 so now the, again, we'll come back to solving this problem here. So I told you that uh, before that uh, we, we, despite of the fact that we can, uh, we can uh, prove that if you have a global minimizer, but you know to get the global minimizer. So I told you before, if you do the gradient descent of other methods for larger n, this brown one is kind of a sympathetic error. The blue one, you just get a stagnated. I also had this example, even do the L2 feature, H1 features in 1D, it takes forever to converge. If you want to have accuracy, OK. And uh, so then uh, one of the things, that because we cannot do it, well, now this is the question we're going to do the, in, the, in the lab. And uh, as I also said, the gradient descent method does have convergence for low frequency. You can get the profile of the solution. You can get a certain accuracy. But if you want to get a further improved accuracy, it's going to, so uh, uh, the, the way we do it right now, we're going to use this greedy algorithm. I think yesterday, and uh, you have the live session, I heard you also had the greedy algorithm. But today, we're going to do the greedy algorithm on this one here. It's an optimization algorithm. We're, we're studying the optimization community. But for some reason, people have not used this one for machine, for deep learning. We, 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 we did some analysis. And you do this uh, orthogonal greedy, uh, greedy algorithm. This what is this relaxed greedy algorithm? You there, are, you basically you look at the residual, and uh, it's a correction, a residual correction method. If you look at the if you know the residual, you add the residual, you get the exact solution. Okay. If you don't know the residual, you want to find the residual equation, the residual direction. But your dictionary, your activate, your, your those neural network functions, the neurons are not uh, in the uh, in the in in this uh, residual direction. So basically, you find the best fit in that direction. This is what it's an max problem. And uh, if you do that one, then you then you do some kind of gradient descent in that direction and uh, do optimization in that direction. This is called a greedy algorithm. Every time you add one neuron. But in the, in the uh, reduced order method, model method, uh, you can do uh, similar things. Of course, the question is that the, the bigger business in, the, in this business is that uh, you have to be able to solve this Augie-Marx problems. And uh, sometimes uh, those things are not attractable. 
But anyway, for the sake of demonstration, but there, we, we, uh, there are many interesting issues here. But here you can actually, you, you, you can get this, uh, this, uh, this uh, relaxed greedy aggregate into the negative half kind of result, the greedy aggregate. In this case, uh, this is the, I don't know, maybe I should have, not, not, I was trying to do the proof here. But a relaxed greedy algorithm gets you to the end of the negative half, which is, which is like a sampling argument kind of thing. And uh, every time you just have to add uh, the neuron in the close to the, the gradient direction or negative gradient direction. In this, maybe the residual. Or, or you, in general, it's the, it's the gradient. Because, okay, <laughs> it's still the, the greedy algorithm is, is like a gradient descent method. You, every time uh, you, you're looking for a direction which is the closest to the negative gradient di direction, then you go that direction, you, you minimize your energy in that direction. But anyway, the, you, for doing that, you can get uh, into the negative half. Uh, so yeah, if you do these things here, uh, you can, uh, this is the, by Monte Carlo, you do the greedy algorithm, then you do n neurons. Because I square these things here, you get an end of the negative half, the neuron is the end of negative one. And you're going to hopefully in today's lecture, uh, the, the, the computer lab, you, you, you experiment with this greedy algorithm. And, uh, but uh, what is the most interesting, okay, the proof again is, uh, what is the, uh, what is more interesting is that uh, there's something uh, called orthogonal greedy algorithm, which I believe that's also what you guys probably did. Uh, uh, the uh, orthogonal greedy algorithm, this is a, a result which surprised many of our colleagues here. If you look at the greedy algorithm in the general statistical, it's enter the negative half. But we are able to do orthogonal greedy algorithm. We are able to get the optimal error. So you have a question to ask this morning. And uh, if you do the uh, if you do the greedy algorithm, orthogonal greedy algorithm, it is possible to get the optimal order of convergence. This is a long trivial proof we did. And uh, but. Uh, one of the big problems here is, you see, is you have to solve, find the things in the dictionary that best match the gradient direction. This is a computable quantity, by the way, but you have to match in the, in the direction. But if the, you know, in one day this mode today, we're gonna do sigma, uh, you have Wx plus b, right? But in one D, you can pull this W out, okay? Because of homogeneous. So basically, you have to solve, uh, you, you want to find the best B. And uh, so that uh, uh, you, you need to solve uh, one dimensional optimization problem. I give you a, a smooth function on the unit interval. How do you find the maximizer? Sorry, that sounds like a naive question. And okay, I'll give you a smooth function on the unit cube. How do you find the maximizer of the unit? The, the oh, freshman calculus will do it, take the gradient. But it turns out it's a highly long trivial problem. I don't know. Uh, yeah, good. And uh, uh, well, let's just suppose you can do it, okay? Uh, uh, if, probably not much to ask. It's a, again, uh, it's an it's a, it's a interesting topic. Uh, suppose you solve this one here, but what we do right now, I just uh, put a grid there, you know, to find some initial, the biggest one, find, do some Newton method to find it. But again, at this point of the game, the cost is not my concern, okay? I, I just want to see some rate of convergence. That's my motivation. I just, I don't care how much time you spend. But anyway, again, it's a very open new area if you want to do work, but there's lots of questions you can ask. If you do these things, we are able to, to get the, best, the, the 
best order. If you take uh, in this today, we're going to talk about uh, maybe L2, you take k equal to 1, d equal to 1, the into the negative 2, you should get the rate of, if you free the L2 functions. Uh, now, this is the only method I know so far, which we can prove uh, you can achieve the rate of convergence. I do not know any other method. Uh, but again, uh, but proof, but even, okay, <laughs> forget about the proof. Uh, even without a proof, I don't know any method. But, but I'm happy to be proven wrong if you, you, you happen to know some magic method the, because there are so many smart people around. I give you L2 function, which you're going to do this afternoon. You find a neural network that fits the L2, this function L2 norm. Zero all the PDE. <laughs> and uh, to get the optimal theoretical rate, the rate means that if you, if you, if you double the, the number of neurons, you should multi reduce the things by four or something. <laughs> You should see that kind of stuff. And uh, we are happy to be able to actually prove these things. Then you, you, you'll see that. But again, maybe you, you, know, you, you, you probably know better. Okay. Uh, so numerically, we have uh, basically, uh, uh, you, you, you observe uh, all this uh, order of convergence numerically. You, you want to see. Uh, 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 you do the 2D, this is 1D high order. If you do the gradient descent method, is is Adam great? It just has no convergence. Okay, Adam, you gotta get stuck very quickly. You, you no matter how hard you work, you just don't get it anyway. But uh, but if you do a gradient descent method, we can as we proved that you can do this thing. This is for 1D and. Uh, Force odd, we do all that. And uh, long ninja problem, you can also do. Uh, 2D, all that. Ha <laughs> ha. Now, the thing is about how about high dimensional problem? Uh, 10D, let's say. If you do 10D without much of a structure, for me, it's a hopeless problem. Okay, I cannot do it. If you have some structures of the solution, for example, if the solution is additively separable, Okay. Oh well, maybe you have some complicated coefficients. It doesn't matter. So you need structures. Then I can do 10D. I, I get all this beautiful rate of convergence. Okay, you can do that. Uh, that's my state of art. Okay. So the. Uh, so I use a second, uh, oh, sorry, I also have this thing, so what you call, uh, uh, wait a minute. Oh, this one here, this is a pin, okay. If you do pin, the loss function would be, uh, uh, if you do the pin, the loss function would be the residual. Uh, even the Neumann problem, you have to do the penalization. You can, you can uh, this is, of course, the famous paper of uh, Kanye Docks and his group. And you can prove all this. You can do all this analysis, OK? But of course, the assumption will be a little bit different. But rigorously, you can still do some estimate. Uh, so just want to summarize that uh, we use the second two minutes order PDE to demonstrate all the theory, the algorithm. And uh, to do the analysis, inverse inequality or Bernstein inequality do not hold. And we use the property of stable neural network. We are able to do the analysis. We can do the sampling, Gaussian. And we're using the statistical learning, the greedy algorithm, to do this reduce of the case power. But we are able to prove that the greedy algorithm uh, is able to achieve the optimal. That's, uh, that's, that surprises many of our colleagues in the optimization community. We are able to prove that. So that's kind of a happy story for this particular case. And uh, this is a couple of papers. Thank you very much.
Yeah, that's a very good. Thanks for the question. Actually, this m actually is, a, is certainly related to the coefficients. Is actually this m is the norm, this variation norm of the function to be approximated, and uh, this is one of the catch of this algorithm. Your your question addressed to something which I didn't have time to get into, is that. Uh, this M, is, you are supposed to get an, uh, some kind of a priori uh, information of the solution is the variation space or barren norm of the function to be approximated. This is the M, uh, which in this uh, is the second one, N, M, and uh, um, yeah, this, this is the M. But also for that one, it's certainly related by the size of the coefficients and all that, it's a sigma. And of course, uh, the 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 uh, um, yeah, this is uh, this is pretty much the norm of the the coefficient, the 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 the, 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 the solution that you're trying to approximate. And again, uh, your your intuition is quite right. It, it's related to the size of the coefficient. But uh, again, uh, this is a little bit of catchy here. A little bit. Of, uh, this is the best we can do. And uh, so you have to adaptively somehow find this M. It, it's just a little, the, the things uh, which uh, still requires work. Thanks for the talk. Um, have you compared the performance of your orthogonal, orthogonal greedy algorithm to second order methods like quasi Newton methods or something? They don't convert. I do not know any other method that convert. Newton method, of course, uh, it works if you have good initial gas. You just cannot. Uh, if your initial gas is close to the global minimizer, I'm sure <laughs> Newton method will work. But uh, I'm not even talking about theory. I do not know. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I just need everybody's help. I'm not aware of any other method that converge, including Newton method or quasi Newton. Yeah. Is this highly long convex? It's very easy to get stuck in the local minimizer. But the miraculously, the the greedy algorithm. I like it to reduce all the methods, uh, R O M or all that. You you sometimes can, but in this particular case, we can actually uh, really get the, the optimal theoretical optimal results. Well, with still little catches there, uh, it's just this whole thing is so complex. <laughs> so so here you rely on the fact that you have an energy, right? What if you don't have an energy for your PD? So that's why I have this pin business. <laughs> the, you don't need the energy, by the way. The energy is just this. Yeah, you, you can do residual. Oh, so let me think about all your question a little bit more carefully. If you do elliptic problem, you need the. Um, yeah, you, you do not. Uh, you, you can do other method. You can just do the residual. So how does it compare? So wh where you have an energy and you can also do residual, how do they compare from the precision? Oh. Very good. If you do Neumann boundary value problem, I would certainly use the energy yeah. because uh, you don't the Neumann boundary when you don't have you do not have the penalized that that when you have the penalized it. Mm. And uh, we actually have some comparison. I don't want to do this comparison. I just don't <laughs> want you know to. to if the, the pin is better than my measure, I'm not happy. 
<laughs> if my method is better than pain, then my pain friends are not high pain. I don't do comparison. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, and, uh, but I trust me, if it's, uh, pain is better than my, I don't mind sharing. <laughs> but uh, but uh, you, you mathematically you kind of know the answer. And uh, you, know, you know, the in terms of regularity, you know, this time so you need the, you, if you do second order problem, you, you, you need a second order derivative, right? If you do the energy, you only need a first order derivative. If you do ReLU, you cannot even do second order. So uh, if you do energy, you can do, <laughs> but anyway. Uh, but the P is such a generic approach and uh, a black box. For that is uh, very, very useful. And uh, anyway, the analysis here does not particularly depend on the. I have to be careful answer your question. Uh, I have to think about the proof process. And uh, yeah, my my answer I think is uh, certainly for elliptic equation is fine. Well, I did that. Now if you talk about Burgos equation or something like that. But, uh, but a Baker's equation, my theory won't apply because you have the shocks. <laughs> well, well, I also take it about shock. Uh, if you do really shock, it's not a Burgos equation. You have the conservation law. The viscosity is accurate zero. You need an entropy of water. If you have some uh, layers, maybe you can still do it. But anyway, the, uh, but, but the, the theory here is, uh, <laughs> requires a solution to be quite smooth. Short play is kind of smooth. It's just the derivative is big, I suppose. I don't know. But you, you know, many people report the beautiful results. I just could not explain theoretically why it should work. And uh, yeah, I, I believe the answer is kind of yes. Oh, uh, what, what's, what's your question? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, you, you should be able to, to deal with, uh, you don't have to use, okay, the answer is no. You do not have to use energy, right, in general. Okay, uh, let's thank uh, Jinshao once again, and we'll uh, meet uh, in uh, 3.30 for the hands-on session. Okay. Yeah.